Okay, this is Mechanics Checkpoint 2. This is about moments. Okay, first question is about a pub sign. Um, it's hanging on the wall here. We've got to draw on the forces, uh, label A, B and C, three forces which are acting on this bar. Well, the most obvious one is the weight. So we need to start from the point, whoops, from the point where that's acting. I'm going to draw that again. Uh, do, do, do. Vertically downwards, if I can manage to draw a vertical line. A bit better. So vertically downwards, I'm going to call that one A. And then we've got a force on this end, which comes from the wire. So I'm going to draw a force along the wire here. In this direction, I'm going to call that B. And then there must be a third force, because if they were the only two forces, it would be going left. Obviously, the wall is stopping it go left. There must be a force on the hinge. And that must be creating a force which is going to the right and also upwards to oppose that. So it does say down here, state the origin of these three forces. So A is the weight of the sign. B is the tension in the wire. And C is the reaction force from the wall. Okay, so three forces, nothing else going on there that's going to affect the beam. Obviously, there's other forces in this system. There are the equal and opposite forces to those. There's a force up here from the um, wire pulling the wall, for example, and the wall pulling the wire. But these are the three forces that are acting on this metal bar. Okay, so then we get to do some maths on this. So it tells us the bar is 0 0.75 metres long. So mark that in, 0 0.75 metres. And it tells us that the um, mass of the bar and the sign altogether is 12 kilograms. Um, so we know this force down here is 12G. We know there's some tension in the wire here, T. Okay, and this is the one that it's asking us to find, find the tension in the wire. What we don't know is what's going on here. Okay, so this is always the crucial thing in moments questions. Work out where you're going to take moments about. So I'm going to take moment around this point here, which I'm going to call P for pivot. Okay, so always start off with your first line. We're looking for clockwise moments around the pivot, and they've got to be equal to the anti-clockwise moments around the pivot. So it looks to look for anything clockwise. Look back to 12G. What's that doing? Well, that is trying to make it go clockwise. So we've got 12 times 9.8 is the force. And then this must be equal to the distance. Well, the distance is 0 0.75 metres over 2 because it's told us this is a uniform bar. Nothing else trying to make it go clockwise. There's an anti-clockwise force. Um, you can work out the perpendicular distance, so you could work out this distance here. Okay, but it's easier in this case, I think, to resolve the force. So we're looking for this angle here. This is a Z angle here, so this is 40 degrees. So we want T cos 40 times the distance from the pivot. Well, that's the whole 0 0.75 metres. Okay, so that gives us T equals uh, 12 times 9.8 times 0 0.75 over 2 times cos 40 times 0 0.75. Obviously, they cancel out, but if you put that into your calculator, you'll find that you get um, 77 newtons of tension in the wire. Okay, question two. Similar sort of question, really. We've got um, a bit of a complication here because we've got this force being provided by this pulley. But the crucial thing to remember about uh, forces over wires in pulleys is if we look over here, there's a weight here, which is 2G. There must be a tension in here. This isn't moving, so there must be uh, forces here in equilibrium. So the tension here is 2G. So the tension here is also 2G. Okay, so calculate the tension of the string. All you've got to do is the mass 2 times gravity 9.8 gives you a tension of 19.6 newtons. Okay, show that the mass of the bar is 3.5 kilograms. Okay, remember this is a show that. This is just to check that you've got the right answer. When you get to the end, don't use that piece of information. What are we going to do? Well, we've got a force up here. We've got a weight of the bar acting from the middle. Oops. Got a weight of the bar acting from the middle here which is mg. Okay, we need to take moments around somewhere. Well, we don't know what's going on here, do we? So let's get rid of this. Let's use take moments around b. 
So just as before, please don't be lazy. Clockwise about B equals anti-clockwise about B. Okay, so what you've got to notice here is that clockwise about B is the force of 2G, but it's not the whole of that force. It's 2G equals 30. Um, and then that's times the distance from the pivot, which is 1.6. And that's equal to the anti-clockwise moment. Well, that's this one here. So that's a force of MG times the distance. Well, that's halfway along. Again, it tells us a uniform bar. So this distance here is 0 0.8 meters. So MG times 0.8. Okay, you might have put the 19.6 in there, but if you don't do that, you can cancel out the G's to get the mass. So uh, 3.2 cos 30 divided by 0 0.8 uh, comes to, I think if you do it exactly, 3.46 kilograms. Okay, it's nice if you give them that extra significant figure to show it's about 3.5. Makes it look as if you're not just trying to cheat them by giving them the answer they've already asked for. Okay, in this part of the question, uh, mass M is, add, is added at 0 0.4 metres from A, so this distance here is 0 0.4 metres. Okay, crucial to notice that means this distance here is 1.2 metres. We've put an extra mass here, big MG. Remember, we've already got 3.46 G hanging from the centre. That is the mass of the bar, so the centre of the mass of the bar is there. Um, so we're now changing it to make the maximum possible uh, force, the largest value of mass. Well, what that means is you're going to move this pulley this way until this string goes straight up. That's going to be the best way to hold that bar up. So we've got rid of taking the components of this now, um, but we've got an extra weight here. So um, again, if we write clockwise about B equals anti-clockwise about B, now what we can say is the clockwise moment is now just 2G times uh, 1.6. No need to put a cos 30 in here. And that is equal to uh, big MG times 1.2 metres. Remember, get that distance from the pivot. That's why we're writing B here, so we don't forget that. Plus 3.46G times 0 0.8. Okay, again, you'll notice if you leave them in, the Gs cancel out. So you get 3.2 is 1.2m plus 0.8 times 3.46. Okay, if you put that in your calculator, uh, you'll find that you can put an extra m equals 0.36 kilograms of mass. Question 3. Okay, um, this is asking you to define what a moment is. Okay, this is a causal question where everybody knows, but that doesn't mean everyone gets the marks. Okay, so what you need to write is the force times the perpendicular, perpendicular, okay, so there's a mark for having perpendicular in here, distance from the pivot. Okay, a lot of people there will write force times distance from the pivot and get one out of two. Okay, another definition for part two. Okay, lots of different ways you can express this. Um, generally speaking, I would just say it's the point from which all the force, all the weight, I should say, sorry, appears to act. Uh, you will see more complicated definitions like the point ar around which the weight creates no resultant moment. Okay, but I think that definition is fine. Okay, so again, we've got to calculate uh, some numbers in this. So calculate the force F exerted by the tow bar on the trailer. So just get your head around this first of all. The center of gravity of this um, trailer is closer to the car than the um, wheels on the trailer are. So if you got rid of the car, it would flop down this way. So you've got to take moments to work out how big that force is. Again, we don't know what's going on here, so the best thing is to label this. Uh, this is the rear axle, so we'll label that R. And we're looking for clockwise about R equals anti-clockwise about R. So the clockwise moment around R is this one. This is the force trying to make it go this way. So F times 2.5. Again, if you've written down R here, you can see that there's the distance from F to R. We're not going to get confused by the wrong distance. So F times 2.5 equals 
uh, the weight of the trailer, which is 1800 times 0.35. Okay, that becomes a fairly easy calculation. Um, and you get 200 and 52, I think if you do it exactly, but 250 newtons. Calculate FR. Okay, well, the way, there's two ways you can do this. You can take moments around this point here, or you could take moments around this point here. Okay, any of those would do. But actually, slightly simpler, there's only one downwards force, there's two upwards forces. So the simplest way to do this is to just do the upwards force equals the downwards forces. So the downwards force is the 1800. The upward forces are the 250 we've always already worked out, plus FR. So that's 1550 newtons. Okay, but you could take moments, it's just a slightly more difficult way to do it. Okay, question four, a little bit of a tricky explanation here. So um, we need to try and work out which springs will be compressed more. Okay, we can see the centre of mass here is closer to the rear axle than the front axle. Okay, so that's the th first thing I'd say, the centre of mass is closer to the rear axle. Okay, so if you take moments around there, um, FA times um, the distance from the centre of mass must be equal to FB times its distance. So therefore, since uh, this distance is bigger than this distance, so distance from A to M, let's call it, oops, distance from A to M is less than the distance from B to M, therefore F A is greater than F B. So the rear springs more compressed. Okay, quite a tricky explanation that one. Okay, but Think that will get you the marks. So again, a bit easier to actually just do the numbers. So take a moment to round axle B, calculate the force um, on each of the rear springs. So this is B, here's the front, so we're going to take moments about B, clockwise about B equals anti-clockwise about B. So this is the one that's making it go clockwise. Let's work this out. F A, so the force at A times the distance of 2.5 metres must be equal to the 14,000 newtons times the distance of 1.4 metres. Again, look at it, that's from there to there. Okay, if you write this, it'll just help you to remember. So the force at A must be 14,000 times 1.4 divided by 2.5. If you stick that in your calculator, um, then you get 7,840, which a lot of people will write as the answer. Unfortunately, there's a little sneaky trap in this question. Each rear axle, uh, each rear spring, sorry, and it tells you up here somewhere. Doo, 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 doo. Um, there are four identical springs, one near each uh, wheel. So what you've got to work out is there's two springs at the back. So you've got to divide by 2, so 7,840 divided by 2 is 3,920. So each spring has got a force of 3,920 newtons.